Hello and welcome. So in my previous videos on this little setup, I used it basically as a groove box where I was writing both rhythmic and melodic sequences and doing sound design in those realms and building out uh, kind of a full track from scratch type thing. Now in that video, I think I showed the overall workflow and ecosystem uh, but I think I kind of glossed over a lot of the actual sound design power and potential of this setup. And so in this video, I want to focus more on that. And specifically, I want to focus on this setup for drum synthesis and percussion synthesis, which is, I think, its forte. So we won't be making any melodic uh, content in this one. So first off, let me unmute all this. I have uh, both of these, uh, the model samples and the Volca drum, in their kind of init patch state. Uh, meaning the sequencer is totally empty, and they all have their default sounds loaded, which are these. And okay. And um, I also, I'll quickly review the, the routing setup here, which is pretty simple. Uh, this is purely a MIDI controller. I'm just using it for convenient drum pad control for the instruments here. MIDI out from here goes to MIDI in on the model samples. Uh, MIDI out on the model samples goes to MIDI in on the Volca drum, and that's it. Uh, the audio goes from the output of each of the instruments into the mixer, and then from the mixer into the recording device. So the goal here is to build ourselves a six part drum kit. Now we have 12 total parts right between the two, but I'm going to layer them and uh, to do that actually works uh, basically with default settings. So you just, this by default is sending out MIDI channels one through six on its tracks one through six. And the Volca drum, when it's in its multi-channel mode, which I think is the default setting, it is listening on channels one through six. Uh, so all you have to do is on the model samples, go into your track menu, go down to the M out option and enable that for every track. Now you'll see anytime I hit one of these pads, the corresponding pad on the Volca drum is lighting up. And likewise, when I hit these pads, it's doing the same thing. So the Volca drum is uh, the synthesizer in here in the sense that it is an actual synthesizer. Uh, the model samples, of course, has some kind of synthesis capabilities, but at the core, it's playing samples and that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the Volca drum in order to kind of create the, the body of the sound. And then we'll use uh, whatever sample on top of that to make it better, whether it's to make the body more interesting, adding more texture, or to add a transient or something like that. So the main thing, uh, the whole kind of concept of this is that any sort of a, a drum sound or a percussion sound has two main elements, uh, the transient, which is where the, um, the whatever it is, the hand or the stick or whatever it is that is creating the sound is first impacting the device, uh, such as the drum head. And then there's the body where that sound rings out over time. And so things like the, the tightness of the drum head, uh, or you know, if you're hitting a piece of metal, like a, a cymbal or something like that, that is all going to affect the body, how long it rings out, how it resonates, things like that. So uh, let me get all the effects turned down here on the Volca drum. So to start with, um, we're gonna kind of stick with the the pretty standard layout here of kick, snare, uh, hi-hat. We might do uh, the open hat, closed hat, and then uh, some sort of a percussion sound like a wood block or rim shot or something like that. And then six will be some sort of miscellaneous sound that we add in. What I found is that uh, when I start with the kick drum, I tend to get kind of ear fatigue more quickly by just hearing the kick drum over and over, even if I like it. So I'm gonna skip the kick, we'll start with uh, track two, which will be our snare type sound. So on the Volca drum, uh, you're going to get this snare type of sound most likely through some combination of filtered noise and an envelope. And that's exactly what the default uh, snare sound is. It's filtered noise and an envelope. So uh, as before, if you want to kind of give yourself like a little jump start, you don't want to just start from scratch. There is always the randomized function so uh, you want to select either one or both your layers. So right now I have both layers selected. If I hit function layer randomize, it's going to give me a total, totally random sound, which sounds nothing like a snare. 
Okay, so we'll just use this kind of as a way of like starting from scratch, right? So we have something that sounds nothing like a snare. Let's turn it into a snare. So first off, we have two layers to work with here. Um, I like to focus on them one at a time. So the first thing I do is I go into layer two and I turn the level all the way down so we can't hear it at all. Now we're going back to layer one and we just focus on whatever sound this one is making. So currently it's making that sound. So we want this to be a snare. Let's start with that filtered noise, which is one of your oscillator options here. Let's try this. Oops, wrong. There we go. Okay. And now let's start playing with some of the other modulation options here. So there is, uh, under the modulation, there is a kind of a random or sample and hold. It's going like that. And let's add a different, an exponential EG to it. So that's changing the envelope of when the sound starts and when it ends. And so I think this is pretty good because what's happening is the sound's kind of ramping up in volume and then it ramps down again, which gives us a little bit of space right at the beginning in order to add a transient from either a sample or a different layer. So let's stick with this for layer one. And I'll maybe have the volume uh, mostly up. And we might want to make it a little bit shorter though. So let's play with the release. Okay, that sounded good. Now, um, we will, I have the, the send effect up to maximum. We're not going to use the effects yet. We'll kind of save that for the end. Um, but, you know, I do like to use the, the effects. So we'll turn that send up. So let's move into layer two. Uh, first of all, let's turn layer one down. So we know what sound we have there. In layer two, we now have this sound. I think we want to change that. So let's go into, again, filtered noise, but let's do the filter the other way. So this time we're applying a low, fats, low pass filter to the noise. And let's pick um, different modulation. I'm just gonna kind of try some stuff. That's kind of interesting. Let's see how both those layers sound on top of each other. So go back into layer one, turn it up, and now we're hearing both at once. Okay, let's try messing with layer two a bit more. Okay, so what I've done here is I've turned the attack down to zero, so we hear layer two immediately. But instead of having it ring out with that kind of like wavy sound, I have it cutting off right about when the next sound peaks. So in that sense, we can say layer two is our transient, layer one is the body. Okay, let's go with that. Now we have a third layer to add from the model samples here, which is going to be some sort of sample. Now, of course, this could just be a sample of a drum or a sample of a snare drum. But that's a little too easy. So let's find something else instead. Okay, so what I've done here is I've loaded up a wave table. I just picked one at random. And a wavetable is going to typically have 120 consecutive single cycle oscillators inside it. I have turned on loop mode and I've set my length down to zero. So now when we hear this sound, um, well, first of all, we're going to hear it layered on top of the Volca drum. Oh, we should, if MIDI out was on, which it is. So we're hearing that kind of high pitched sound. That's not probably not what we want. So let's scrub through this wavetable and just see if something jumps out as like working here. Okay, I like something in the tone of that. Uh, let's set the decay way down, and then let's pitch it way down as well. And 
and maybe filter it. High pass filter. With some resonance. That's a very classic uh, snare sound, but it's uh, it's different, and I think that's kind of the point of the setup is to find something different. So let's do that. Let's maybe play with that LFO on it a little bit also. Let's put an LFO on. See what happens if we put an LFO on the length, which means that it's going to uh, kind of randomly get a little bit more of that wavetable. You heard that? It makes it a little bit kind of crunchy, gritty. Interesting. Let's try that. Okay, I think let's just leave that. Now uh, for the mixing stage. On the model samples here, we have either this volume control right here, which if you go over 100 actually turns into a distortion circuit. So if you want to overdrive the sound, you can. And then you also have just, if you back out of this, you have your general level control up here. That's just straight volume. And that's useful if you want to, say, overdrive it, but not have it be too loud. So let's try that. Oh, put this to max. OK. It sounds like something broken. Let's try that. So let's uh, stick with that and move on to the next sound, which will be whatever we put in track number three. So yeah, let's go for a hi-hat kind of sound here. And I will do the same thing. Layer two, I'm gonna turn all the way down. Layer one, uh, the level is up. And let's just explore what we have here. So that was just a bit of kind of random exploration to get here. And now let's go into the deeper menus also, where we have effects like uh, Bitcrush. Oops. Ah, yes, the annoying part about these is that you can't tap, <laughs> you can't tap to hear it. Um, so I'm gonna have to do it down here. Wave folding. Skip to one, drive. Panning, gain, and pitch quantization. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so that's the start of our sound. When I'm hitting this, we're also hearing this, so for now I'm just gonna turn this volume all the way down so we're not hearing the sample layer at all. Okay, so there's our layer one. Now let's turn layer one down Turn layer two up and focus on it. And again, I'm just going to go explore and see where we wind up. Well, that's sounding pretty good. Let's maybe add some of those other effects. Oh right, these deeper effects are actually applied to both the layers simultaneously. So the, the bit crushing, um, the drive, and the wave folding that I previously applied to layer one is also being applied to layer two. So that's fine. Okay, now let's hear both layers together. Might be a better snare than the first one I came up with. Eh, that's okay. Let's roll with it. So um, on this one now, we can add, again, a layer of sample. 
and let us just do something. Let's do the same thing of adding a wavetable. Turn on loop, set my length down to zero. And let's turn, I'm gonna go into layers one and two, turn them both down. So now we're only hearing this. Uh, right now our, our volume is down, so bring that up. interesting. So I've got my length at five. So basically that's five different single cycle oscillators that are all strung together and those are looping. It's making this kind of weird sound. Um, let's throw an LFO on that too and just see what it does. Let's do, let's do the pitch. Okay, subtle one on the pitch there. Maybe slow it down. Okay, let's do that. one to decay faster also one like that and now bring the polka drum back in okay well we definitely made a percussive sound um, I don't know if I would call that a hi-hat but it's something um, and to my ears what we're getting is that most of the body is coming from this this kind of has this low end oomph to it and then Polka drum is more in this kind of high-end uh, noise sound. Okay, let's go with that. Track four, what do we got next? Turn this volume down, go through the polka, and let's, you know, let's just go back and randomize again, see where we, it's, sometimes it's fun just to randomize to get a random starting point and then go from there. Wow, okay, let's do it. So layer two, volume down, layer one, volume up. Sounds like birds. Some kind of weird almost cowbell territory. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, I keep accidentally hitting the other ones. Let me use this instead. Wave folding. Drive. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do that and maybe just make it really shorter. That's a very transient kind of sound. It's just a little tick, right? Oh, apparently that's noise. Having one layer be noise is almost always a good thing. together. Oops. I'm not hearing this one anymore. 
did something wrong. We're not here in la layer one anymore. Not sure why. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's maybe come back to that one. Oh, we haven't done samples on this one yet. I'm going to, I'm just going to pick some kind of random sample, uh, like a one shot, and we'll see, see what it is. So, let's. now. Yeah. And let's start with randomization again. No. Um, actually, I think this one, I want it just to be more of like a, yeah, more of just like a rim shot type of thing. So let's go, I'm going to be more purposeful with it. So let's go into layer one and set it as a saw wave. This looks good. Go into layer two and turn it down. <whistles> yes, precisely. So we got a saw wave, um, we've got a like an exponential mod, mod envelope and an exponential EG. Turn the release way down. Basically just a tick with a hint of tonality to it. Turn you down. Okay, that's layer one, layer two. samples we got here already
let us pick a single cycle oscillator at random. Yeah, loop. done on this one I'm overdriving it but turned the the level down to kind of compensate for that I've got a resonant filter on it we will put an LFO on that filter cutoff just to move it around a bit make that really fast maybe try some different shapes to text. Okay. Track 6. So let's see, what do I want here? I don't know. 6 is always just kind of my wild card. Um, so in that spirit, let's randomize. That was very tame. Oh shoot, I randomized. Darn it, I accidentally randomized the one we already made, so we'll have to come back to that. Okay, that's why it wasn't working. That's pretty cool. Play with that. is but it's almost a kick drum and now let's add a sample to it and again I'm just going to kind of pick something at random here maybe that's cool circuit vent kick from a 707, I think, or 505. All right. So maybe. Okay. Uh, circle back on number one. And let's do another kick. The default kick's not bad. Um, just gonna start from that and tweak it a bit.
Okay. So I've got another circuit bent kick drum sample on here, applying an, uh, an LFO to tweak a resonant filter on top of it. So it's coming out a little different each time. Okay, cool. Uh, now I remember, oof, yeah, sorry about that. On track five, I turned this down. We had messed up our sound accidentally, so let's start over on that one. Oh, I'm only randomizing one layer, that's why. Let's try that. So, uh, so I don't mess this up again. Let's save our kit here, and then we can also save on here. Let's just give it a random name. Okay, let's mess around. See where we're at. we've made a very unusual drum kit. So let's uh, sequence this in and have a little jam with it. So. Start with this one. Let's do 32 steps. And in here. So there was something in the Volca sequencer already, which is what was happening there.